All right, so you bring everything with you. And as far as the apparatus, when you bring it into the room to complete the skill, you want to go ahead and attach it to the wall. Because you may need to do that in the hospital if it doesn't have the vacuum already. And to do that, to, to um, remove it from the wall, you just turn. You just turn this like button. That's all. So you just line the notches up and push it in your grip click. That's it. All right, so you've already talked to the patient, you've got an assessment, you've, you've verified your order, you checked the name band and everything. So now you're gonna start. You, what you wanna do is measure. So after you get this out of the packaging, you need to know about how far you're gonna have to go in. So the way, the way to measure, to give you an idea, is you go from the tip of the nose to the tip of the earlobe. So you go from the tip of the nose, tip of the earlobe. You have your finger there. Then you go from the tip of the earlobe to the xiphoid process. Now, you will notice when you practice today, you can't go in very far. But on most patients, I mean, feel on yourself where your xiphoid process is. You're going down to there, because then your stomach is a little below there. So you're gonna go all the way down. When you find out, okay, right there, you can, have a, you can either have a black marker and mark it, if it happens to fall on one of these black marks, then you know, okay, so it's that mark. Or you just take a little piece of tape and you can wrap it around. It gives you an idea. I at least need to go there before I stop. So you don't stop before that. So if they're saying, no, I can't take it anymore, I can't take it, and you're here, well, I need to go in just a little bit more. You at least need to go to that. Okay? So you have this in your hand, you're going to coil it around because this will be stiff in the packaging. So you're coiling it so it's more flexible. All right. And this is clean, so you have it on the patient. Now if you have a towel, you can set it on top of the towel. Now in here, so I have this towel here. All right, so you have cup and you have straw for your patients. So when it's time for them to take a sip, and you wanna put it close to them, you'll tell them, okay, grab your cup, now I'll start taking some sips, because you're really not gonna be able to do both. And then you have an emesis basin, so you can set this here for the patient. Then you have your lube and you have your syringe. Now, before you actually start to anchor, what you wanna do is go ahead and connect it like that, because if their stomach is full of gastric content, fluid, it's going to start to backflow once you get to the stomach. So, in order to not have a spill, just go ahead and, and clamp it like this. That way, when it gets to here, it'll stop. Also, if you start to move down and you start to see fluid coming back before you make it to your tape, still continue going until you've reached your mark. Because you've made a baseline measurement and you know, well, no, I haven't, I haven't at least reached the, the part that I think it should where it should be all right so you have all that then you're going to loop about the first three to four so there's like little perforations along here you can lub lubricate along here and that's just to pass through the nose so what you tell the patient is okay you're gonna um, I'm ready to start you can ask them you know you can ask them are they ready or not um, it's up to you to just tell them okay I'm ready to start what I need you to do is just to lay back and relax so you want their head back and naturally when you start to go like this, they're gonna naturally go back because they wanna avoid, they don't want you to go in their nose. So you have it lubricated. So I always have a hand on the patient and I'm gonna go in. So if I've assessed the right size of the bed, okay, go ahead and lean back, all right? And just take a couple of deep breaths for me. What you will hear is them choking and gagging because when you get to that gag reflex, that is what initiates that. Once you get past the gag reflex, it's a lot smoother on the patient. You will feel, as you go to the back of the nose, you will feel like a pop because you have the little bones back there. You're going to feel when you pass that. When you pass that, then it's a lot smoother. All right, so they start to choke and gag and they're pushing back. You continue to go. Then when you make it past that point where you feel the pop and the gag reflex, you tell them, okay, now I want you to move your head forward and start taking sips of water for me. Now, if you're going in and they tell you, I feel like I'm choking, like I can't breathe, you want to look in their mouth because it can coil in the back of their throat. If so, you just pull it out, not all the way, because once you get it in, you want to keep it in. 
Because if you pull it out, they may say, forget it. You can't force this on them. So if they pull it, you just say, okay, just bear with me. Okay, I'm going to go again. And again, they're going to be coughing and gagging because you're still by the gag reflex. It's just coiled around it. So once you see, and you can see, even in the mannequins, where you're going. And you can have a pen light. When you make it past that, okay, lean your head forward, take sips of water for me, and you're going in as quickly as they will allow you to go in until you reach your pace. Now, the mannequin's not going to let me go in. That's as far as I can go. Go on a pace, you're going to continue to go. Take sips of water, go. When you make it to, when you get this up to there, you've made it. All right, so what you want to do is take your tape and you want to anchor it. So I take a piece of this silk tape. You first go across the nose, just like that. You're creating a base for the tape. Then you take another piece and you're going to tear this down the middle. Not all the way though. Yep. And then you're going to go across the bridge of the nose, like that. Okay. So then what you're going to do is wrap one side, and you're going to go around. You're going to wrap the other side, same thing, just go around. That's anchoring the NG tube. So then if they accidentally pull it, it's going to pull this tape off, but it's not going to cause so much trauma, and this helps to hold it down a little bit better. Then you're going to check for placement. So if you got a bunch of fluid backing up, have something here because when you take this off, it's going to gush out. And you just take this still. You got your air, 30, at least 30, connect. You're going to have your stethoscope on, so you'll make, make sure you bring that to the scale. If you forget it, say, I would have my stethoscope at this time, and I would push only until I hear gurgling in the stomach. So you're going to have your stethoscope up here somewhere. And once you hear the gurgling, you stop. You don't want to push all 30 of this in because you're giving them gas. So now they're going to be burping and all that. You're going to make them uncomfortable. All right? Once you do that, then you disconnect. You put this back in here. Now, what you also want to do, what you will see them do is um, connect to the gown. So, this is where you can either put it on the, and they go around the shoulder area. So you can either do it like this, depending if you're connecting to suction or not. And they just kind of take it, and you can take this part with the safety pin. And this keeps it close to the patient, because the last thing you want is for them to accidentally sit on it or something. Or you can take tape. Or they won't have the tape on the shirt, they'll just do this and they'll just safety pin it to the gown. You're just trying to make sure that they don't actually sit on it or they yank it. It stays up close in this area. So that if they pull, do pull down here, this stops. But you have to anchor it also to the gown. So either way, just as long as you get it anchored. Now if it's to suction again, you're going to take your tube. So then you're going to keep that blue there, but you're going to grab your clear. You're going to connect to that big port. That goes in just like that. Then you're going to connect this to the 90 degree arm on the suction canister. Then what would happen is you would have another a suction tubing that would connect from here to the Christmas tree that is on here. But for the skills testing, this is what you need to do. And then you would just say, I, I, I would tell you I'd have a sheet with an order, and then I would turn to continuous, hi. That's it. And as far as documentation, it would be anchored a 14 French and G tube, um, uh, connected to um, high continuous suction, patient tolerated with minimal discomfort. And then that would be it. All right. And then they would go off to the x-ray. They would verify placement.
and they would come back and tell you either you're right on or you need to go in more or you need to remove it more. So any questions?